biggest question to you with this unit would be, can you convert from DMS to decimal and from decimal to DMS? Okay, we're just using just those straight up formulas in that packet. And can you convert from degrees to radians and radians to degrees? If you can do that in this section, I'm okay with that at this point, A okay. Um, the word problems at home. Um, was it with arc length? Is that the? For right now, let's leave it at DMS to degrees, degrees to DMS, radians to degrees, and degrees to radians. Thank you. So I didn't know how to get it. I didn't know how to get it from um, radians to radians. So you mean from DMS to degrees? So give me one of the examples. Give me one to do you have one. Um how about so remember you had there were two assignments with this. There was a classwork assignment and a homework assignment. And so um the classwork assignment came in the packet, and I do have some hard copies if you'd rather have a hard copy to keep in your notebook because all your notes are here as well. Um, on my desk. They're printed. They're printed out on my desk if you want one. Um, I posted it online, but do I? It's just the notes, yeah. Yes. Keys to DMS. So the key here is remembering what equals one. Remember, there is um, how many minutes in one degree? 60. And then there are how many minutes, in, how many seconds in one minute? Sixty, right? And so I can always multiply everything by one. So I know that I have 99 full degrees here. Do you agree with that? Do you remember my DMS is in degrees, minutes, and then seconds. So degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay. So I need to know how many minutes is 0.37 degrees. So I take the 0.37 degrees, how many minutes? So do y'all remember doing... Um, Unit analysis and I would did it in science too. Apparently not. You put what you want to cancel out on the bottom, and then you put its equivalent in a different unit on top. So in this case, it would be 60 minutes. Yeah. It wouldn't, you'd have to multiply it by 60. But you could just multiply by 60. And so what would that give you? What's 0.37 times 60? You're gonna find what? I'm finding the minutes right now, and then I'm, if there's a decimal that's left over, I'll use that to find the seconds. So the first thing I do is take the degrees off the top. So I know it's 99 degrees. So now for the seconds, Right, 0.37 degrees times 60 minutes in one second. The degrees would cancel. What's 0.37 times 60? 22. Point what? Two. So it's 22.2 minutes. So I'm going to take the whole number of minutes off. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I didn't have an example going that direction. I have DMS to degrees, but not degrees to DMS. And there's no. That's probably why you confused. Right, so if I take 22 minutes off of that, it leaves me 0.2 minutes, and now I need to know how many seconds is 0.2 minutes. 
So again, I'm going to multiply how many seconds are in one minute. So I put the one minute on the bottom. Somebody was fixing to say it. 60 seconds. So essentially what you're doing is multiplying by 60 every time. And then what's 0.2 times 60? So it's 99 degrees, 22 minutes, and 12 seconds. Does that make sense? Keep taking the whole number off and multiplying by 60. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. So this is what's left over here, the decimal that's left over each time. What were the last few? Let me see what we had. I want to make, because I want to make sure you got everything you need. Can you do arc length? Did y'all understand the arc length? R times theta? The radius times theta? Okay. Which, give me one of the word problems, y'all keep talking about. Oh my gosh, I remember this one. It takes 10 identical pieces to form a circular track for a pair of toy racing cars. So I, they're talking about, they're talking about pieces like this. So it's cut into 10. So you got, I'm assuming this is what they're getting with this. Each one is like 36 degrees. Um, if the inside arc of each piece, the inside arc of each piece is 3.4 inches shorter than the outside arc, what's the width of the track? Okay, so we're talking about, because this one is confusing. Did you understand that this is what they were talking about? Do you understand now? They're talking about a circular track. So the cars are driving around. Here's this little car. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's this little car. <laughs> it's going around this track, right? And so it's a width of track. So think about, my son used to have these little tracks that like hook together. Think about like the railroad tracks. And stuff. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Like the Hot Wheels stuff. So it, it has a width to it. So we're talking more like concentric circles, like a circle inside a circle. So you're looking for this distance. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? And if I divided it up equally and there's 360 degrees all together in the circle, then this angle is what? 36 degrees. Do you agree with that? <laughs> So now here's what I have to think. Remember, how do you find arc length? R times theta. What is R? The radius, right? That's what I don't know. But it tells me that the inside arc of each piece, so this piece, is 3.4 inches shorter than the outside arc. So I'm going to call this, I don't know, x. This one would be x plus 3.4. Do you agree with that? Does that make sense? Okay, so now it wants to know what is the width of the track. So I'm looking for this piece. So what I need to find is I need to find r in each case. And then subtract the two r's. Do you see that? Y'all don't see that. What is R? The radius, right? From here to here. Radius. Or from here to here, right? If I found this one and subtracted this one, it would tell me what's left here. Do you agree? 
So that's my goal. That's what I have to do is I have to find those. But I have some unknowns. So I know that this link, I'm essentially going to set up two different equations. I'm going to name these two R's. I'm going to name one little R and big R. I'm going to name the longer one big R. Just because it's longer, so it's bigger. <clears throat> Okay. Arc length, I called it X, right? This one is going to be 36 times little r. Do you agree with that? Right? Just that little piece, this right here, it's 36 degrees times this little radius. How about the big arc? What could that equation look like? X. X plus 3.4 equals 36 what? Times the big R. You agree there? No, but we're going to have to solve one in terms of the other. I just don't know if I want to get into this today. I don't know if I'd rather get into this or get into trig today. I think I'm going to I'm going to halt and go with what I said to start with. Degrees to min, degrees to DMS, DMS to degrees, radians and be able to find arc length. Outside of that, I'm going to hold off on this for a little bit. So let's ignore that one, yeah. It'll be a while. So we're going to go halfway through four, and then we're going to stop halfway through four, and we're going to derive the unit circle. And I haven't decided if you're going to have a test halfway through four, then a test on unit circle, or it's all going to be on the same. I've got to decide. But I'm still kind of cherry-picking some things because I want us to get through. I want you all to be really set up for calculus next year. If we have time at the end, we may come back and hit this with some word problems with this kind of stuff. If not, it's okay. I'd really rather get into trig today. That's what I've been itching to get to. This was the first lesson, you know. Yeah. So just as a note, let just make sure DMS to degrees and the other way. Radians to degrees and the other way and arc length. We might do some application arc length problems, but right now, just given a theta and an r, can you find the arc length? Or given an r and an arc length, can you go backwards and find theta? Can you do all that finding? Remember, theta is just what we use to represent an angle up there. Y'all okay? Trying to ease us into this as easily as possible. Theta is just the angle measure. Yeah. But that's really your takeaway I'd like you to get from. How many, how many degrees are in a circle? How many radians are in a circle? Two pi, that's exactly right. How many radians are in 180 degrees? One pi, that's exactly right. Hey, y'all got this. Had y'all heard radians before? No. No. All right, y'all need a break before we start? So trigonometry is embedded in triangles, and they are special kind of triangles. Do you know what kind they are? Right triangles. <laughs> right triangles. Right triangles, of course, means there is a what? There is a 90 degree angle. One 90 degree angle. Why can't I have more than one? 
it wouldn't be a triangle because there's only how many degrees in a triangle? 180, and if I use 180 up in two angles, there's nothing left for the third angle, and I just have a straight line, right? No shape. Well, I could have a shape. I could have any way. Never mind. Moving forward. One 190 degree angle. Let me draw this right triangle for us. But do you know the trick functions associated with the right triangle? Okay. I am going to name one of these acute angles, and both of them are acute because they both have to be less than 90, right? I'm going to call one of them theta. However big you want it. And I'm going to name the sides of the trunk what? Theta. 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 <laughs> All right, so theta is, well, it was actually in the lesson last week, so most of us already know what that means. Okay, so this references a degree, an angle somewhere, okay, and it's the most widely used variable to represent angle measurement. Okay. All right, so from theta, I'm also going to name the sides of my triangle. I will name this, um, I'll name this A, this B, and this C. C being my what? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always located, and I'm kind of giving you more information maybe than what I need to because all this should have been given to you in geometry, but we're going to assume that maybe you did not get it. Um, these are called legs. I'm going, the, the shorter, the sides that are not the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse I wasn't even going at this much in detail, but judging by your eyes, whenever I said this is a review from geometry, some of you are going, what? Okay, so the hypotenuse is always the longest side, and it always sits across from the 90 degree angle. So wherever the 90 degree angle is, look across, that's the hypotenuse. It's also always the longest, because 90 degrees is the biggest angle. Do y'all remember the hinge theorem in geometry? Depending on how wide your angle is, if I had a string that stretched from my two fingers here, the wider I made the angle, the longer that side has to be to connect them. So since that's the largest angle in the triangle, it fits that across from that is the longest side. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Everybody okay so far? So we have these trig functions that allow us to find values of either the theta there or the side lengths, but what they are is their ratios that hold true all the time. We have sine, cosine, does anybody know what the last one is? Tangent. Sine we abbreviate as S. In. It is not sin, it is still sine. We drop the E off to abbreviate cosine, COS, and tangent, CAN. You guys done any work with sine, cosine, and tangent before? Okay. 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 So, we have this little acronym that we use a lot. I hope y'all have heard this before. SOKATOA. That does not ring a bell. Okay, if it does not, it's okay. It's just a little acronym to help us remember which ratios of side lengths go with what. So while I am back at this triangle up here, and this is, did somebody say trigonal acid? That's the way we learned it. Some old hippie caught another hippie. Yeah. Um. So Katoa. Okay, so it's an it's an acronym. Uh, I used to do a little extra credit project in geometry. It wasn't worth much, but still, if they could come up with an acronym that would stick, but was nice, that wasn't inappropriate, because the inappropriate ones are always the ones that stick. But 
Um, I used to get some good ones, but I can't. Clearly, they didn't stick because I don't remember any of them. Um, so, this is all relative to where your theta is, okay? So, remember that as I go through. But if I'm looking from, if I let my theta be this angle here, the side across, obviously, this is always the hypotenuse. The side across is going to be my opposite. And then adjacent, if you think about what adjacent means, adjacent means it's right beside it, okay? But it can't be the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse always has its own name. So if this is my theta, this would be my adjacent leg. So going from this, adjacent leg, opposite leg, and hypotenuse. Does that make sense? Can you identify those three parts of a triangle anywhere depending on where my theta is? Theta is only going to be here or here, by the way, because the other is 90 degrees. Are you all okay? If I am looking from this theta, this is the opposite leg, and this is the adjacent leg. I'm going to use that to form my sine and cosine in just a second. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, you determine, it's given to you, or determined. Yes, so let's say... Let's say this was theta, and I called this A, B, and C. Which leg would be the adjacent leg? A. Which leg would be the opposite leg? B. And C is obviously hypotenuse. Yes. Everybody okay? So these trig functions allow us to make ratios out of the side lengths of the triangle. And here's where our little acronym comes in. The sine of any angle theta in a right triangle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the, what do you think? Hypotenuse. That's why we get OH. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, what do you think it equals? Adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And how about tangent? Opposite over radius. Everybody okay so far? Going right along with this, you learned a very, very famous theorem in geometry. And I know you had to get to this. You had to do this. That involves the side length of a right triangle. Everybody remembers it. It's called, yes, the Pythagorean theorem. And it says, and remember, this also has to be a right triangle. The square of the two legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Whoa. P H E O R E N. Plus. <laughs> now, for right now, we're going to be using our calculators to evaluate the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Um, but let's do a couple of examples.
Find all six trips. Right now, find the three trig functions of theta. Look where theta is and tell me what each one equals right now, and then we'll talk about the other two. Hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. It's also the longest side of the triangle. Find sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. Yeah, no, leave me side. What'd you get for sine? Opposite, which is four over five. How about cosine theta? How about tangent theta? Easy and straightforward. Everybody okay? There are three other trig functions that we use frequently. In fact, you will be doing six trig functions of your triangles. And those are the co-functions of the three basics. And all it does is reciprocate them, but we give them a new name. So we have secant, which is actually just one over cosine. It's the opposite. It seems like it'd be one over sine, right? Because it's secant, but it's not. That's actually inverse and it's a little different than the co-function. So it flips it. So if cosine is opposite, so it flips cosine. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, what is secant? Hypotenuse over adjacent. Or the reciprocal of cosine. It flips the cosine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosecant. There's three. Flips sine. So how would you find cosecant? Any guesses on what the last one's called? <laughs> it's actually the most straightforward. It's cotangent. But it is 1 over tangent. So if tangent is opposite over adjacent, then cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Abbreviations here, this would be SEC. CSC, C Everybody okay? Go back to your triangle as you finish this up, the triangle we did the three trig functions on, and find the other three. So find secant theta, cosecant theta, and cotangent. I just can't believe y'all didn't do this in geometry.
Ja. Yeah. Oh, did you have to put theta? Is that what you were asking? You do have to put theta if you're finding a value. Put secant theta. How about cosecant? Like Let's crank it up a notch. How about it? Y'all got that? I don't want to move if anybody's still using it. Let's do number seven from your homework. I love trig. Yeah. Number seven, I have this nice right triangle. Here's my right angle. Here's theta. Remember, this is relative to where theta is positioned. It'll change if theta is in a different spot. Here's 11, and here's 8 for that side. And it says, find the values of all six trigonometric functions of theta. So I want sine theta. Cosine theta, tan theta, cosecant theta, oh, that's a good question, Kirsten. That's exactly right. I'm, I'm missing a side, so that means I have to find that side before I can answer all the questions. So to find that side, I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem. So try that real quick, see what you get. The A and the B? No, it doesn't matter. As long as it equals the hypotenuse squared, it doesn't matter what the order of the two lights are. Don't be afraid to leave things as radicals. That is the more acceptable answer. That's the better way to be to leave it exact. Maybe if you were talking about tangent and you were dividing by it, maybe you still who knows? I would leave that as a radical. And so now opposite, remember Sokotoa. So opposite over hypotenuse. What's the cosine of theta? Yep. 
Y'all can do this. Adjacent. And how about tangent? Now you just have to flip them off for your co function. I can remember this test very vividly in geometry as well as when I took trig. I used to write Sokoto at the top of all my papers all the time. I didn't know. Sokoto, Sokoto, Sokoto. Not Sokoto, Sokoto. How about cosecant? 11 over the square root of 57. You may see this written in rationalized form. Y'all remember doing that? Multiply by the square root of 57 on the top and the bottom so that you don't have that radical in the bottom. I'm not so concerned with that right now as I am working with the trig function. Well, you are simplifying it. What do you mean you're not simplifying it? What are you not simplifying? Square root of 57 doesn't simplify. What? Because we're not breaking any rules leaving it square root of 57. There's no way to break that up and simplify it anymore. So it's an exact form. This is breaking rules because we can't have a radical in the bottom. So when you have, anytime you have a radical in the bottom, remember you multiply the top and the bottom by that radical to get rid of it. So if I had like 3 over the square root of 2, I'd multiply square root of 2, square root of 2, and get Three square root of two over two. I know y'all know how to do that because I did that with y'all in algebra two. <clears throat> but that's only going to be one scenario out of these. Whenever I get to that situation with the radical in the bottom, um, how about secant? Eleven over eight and cotangent. Oh, I guess it'll be two situations. Again, times the 57 would be 8 square root of 57 over 57. Do one more. Okay, then show me you got it. Find all other all the other five trigonometric functions of theta. Well, Brett's got it. Well, it does. It doesn't matter where you put it in your triangle that you're making as long as your cosine theta is 5 over 8. So your adjacent and your hypotenuse have to be in the right place. You see what I'm saying? Based on where. So your, your theta might be at the top. Somebody else's theta might be at the bottom. But then your sides are going to look a little different. But that's okay because at the end when you find your other trig functions, it'll be the same.
all six, all six. Why did I set it up this way? I need to find the opposite side. That's what's missing. If cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, that means I must find the missing side, which is the opposite side. So to find that, what do I need to do? So a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Pretty easy to do from there. Um, I'll let you finish that one on your homework as you go through that one. Um, take out your calculator for just a second. I want you to hit the button that says mode. And make sure highlighted is degrees. Under there, you should see a place that says degrees, radians, parametric, something like that. Mode. Mode is right up by the second button. Okay, degree or radian, so make sure, so highlight degree, hit enter, and make sure it's black and highlighted there before we do these next few. Not radians. We're going to keep it in degrees right now and convert our radians over to degrees to make it a little easier. Now, as we move forward, um, once we get past this little section, most everything we do will be in radians. But for right now, let's put it in degrees and let's talk about how we use this to find some values. Um, if I'm asking you to find, well, let's start easy. Let's do the cosine of 30 degrees. So hit the cosine button and then hit 30 and hit enter. Cause you should have sine, cosine, and tangent, right? Um, there you go. Yes, sorry. And hit enter. 0.8666. We'll get into some exact values very, very soon when we get to the unit circle. What if I asked you to find... This is just calculator. This is coming, this is modeled after I'm fixing to do a couple homeworks. Um, homework, this is number 25. 25 asks you to find the secant of 45 degrees. You don't have a secant button on your calculator, so what can you do? That's exactly right. Tell me what you get. That's exactly right. Okay, so I want you to I want you to use your calculator for some of these. Now you're going to get to some like number thirty one. Thirty one says find the cosine, and this is a calculator problem, but you can't do it in the calculator without doing a little work on your own. Your calculator is, does not do DMS. So you're going to have to convert this either to degrees or to radians. And since we set our calculator to degrees, we're going to convert this over to degrees. So what is 19 degrees and 23 minutes in degrees? 19 plus... That's exactly right. Give it to me in a decimal. So, in fact, I'm really finding the cosine of, and if you wanted to here, put 19 plus 23 divided by 60. That would be in degrees, and you could find that value using your calculator. The point I'm getting to is 
you need to make sure that you're, if your calculator is set to degrees, that you're converting your things over to degrees. Um, some of them will be in radians. How do you tell it's in radians? The pi. The pi gives it away. 33 is the tangent of pi over 12. Now, if you want to go in and hit mode and change your calculator to radians, you certainly may. And then you could type pi over 12. Or you could say, well, I know that pi over 12 is the same thing as, how do I change that over to degrees? I want the pi to go away. and That's exactly right. There's 180 degrees in one pi. What's 180 divided by 12? 15 degrees. So I'm finding the tangent of 15. When you convert from radians, so when you go from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. And when you go from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over. Um, I think I'm going to stop there because we, I wanted to talk about special right triangles, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that y'all have not done special right triangles. This is 55. I just want to show you how this is set up. It's just, yes. So on 55, it tells you that little alpha is 20 degrees. It tells you that little a is 12.3, and it tells you to find every other variable in the triangle. Okay, so you have to remember, one, there's 180 degrees in a triangle. Two, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this, this is a fancy, you'll see it in the, it's a fancy b, it's a beta, it's a capital B, capital beta. Um, that one should be easy for you, it just looks rough. Is that a equal b plus b Alpha is 20 degrees. Let's work through this one because this one's going to be a little bit harder to. All right, so if, if alpha is 20 degrees, what's beta? 70. Got to be 70, right? Because there's 90. Those two make up 90 degrees. Um, little a is 12.3. But uh-oh, I have a bit of a conundrum. I have one side and all the angles. Can I find the remaining side? Mm. Yes. Let's pick an angle to go from. Let's pick um, a reference angle. Shall we use alpha or beta? Alpha. Let's use alpha. Since it was given, I know I didn't make any mistakes on that because it's given to me. What if I asked you to find the sine of alpha? Sine 20 is going to equal what? Opposite, not not in your calculator just yet. I mean, we are going to do it in our calculator, but opposite over hypotenuse. Do you agree? Do you agree this is a value you can get on your calculator? What is it? What is it? It'll tell you... Well, it gives you the ratio. So the sine of 20 or the sine of alpha is 12.3 over hypotenuse. Right? 
the sine of 20 is 0 0.342. Is this an equation that you can solve? Yes. What do I do first? Cross multiply or multiply by C on both sides. So really the equation is 0.342C equals 12.3. And now what is C? Now I have one side, one hypotenuse. Can I find the other side? How? Pythagorean theorem. That's exactly right. I'll leave y'all to find a third. I'm sorry. Does it need to be bigger? I'm sorry. Yes. So your homework tonight is going to be, finish this one too. Go back and look at, finish that third side. 328. Most of these are really, really straightforward. Could have technically done this other sheets, but that'll be good.